This study will show that a pre-tribulation rapture is not possible, if you understand what the wrath of God is, and how to define when the end of the tribulation takes place. I used to be a pre-tribber, and yearned to see Jesus coming for us, prior to him pouring out his wrath. But after many years of disappointments, I decided there must be something else going on here that the church is missing. How can Jesus say, I come quickly, and it's been 2,000 years since he made that statement? If you have eyes to see, and ears to hear, then from this study, you will understand clearly why there cannot be a pre-tribulation resurrection rapture. I understand this is a volatile subject in the church, and probably 95% of the church believes this doctrine, and it brings me no joy to be contrary to this position. But if we could just take this time to reason together, on the merits of the word, and without emotions, I think we can see clearly what scripture is saying concerning this issue. So, let's get started. I want to first familiarize you, with how the word wrath, is being used in scripture. There are two main words used in the New Testament, and one is 2372, in the Strong's Concordance, meaning to rush after, to slaughter, to pant after, to sacrifice, and to kill. The other meaning is number 3709, in the Strong's Concordance, and it means to stretch out after, indignation, vengeance, punishment, and anger. One is very different than the other, and once you understand the difference, you can also understand why there can be no pre-tribulation rapture. Now, let's make the difference known. 2372 is used in this way. Wrath as a result of man himself. Wrath as a result of the devil himself. Wrath as the result of agents of the devil. And wrath as a result of agents of God. And 3709 is used in this way. The person who is wrath himself. And that being God alone. We will now look at verses of scripture, explaining meaning 3709, as God himself being wrath. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. The word, revealed means, to appear, to disclose, to uncover that which was hidden, to expose. So the wrath of God will be uncovered out from heaven, even made to appear out of heaven, against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. The example and answer to this statement, is Revelation chapter 6, verse 14 saying, And the heaven departed as a scroll when it was rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. So, the heaven being moved out of the way, uncovered, and revealed Jesus, who is the wrath of the God, that sitteth on the throne. So it is the person of Jesus, who is also the wrath of God. Now, let's look at another scripture, that bears this out. Scripture says, For he is the minister of God to thee for good. Take note, that Jesus the person, Jesus the man, is the minister of God the Father, for good to the believer. Did you get that? Jesus the man is the ministry of God for good to the believers. Continuing. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. The sword of God is the word of God. Jesus the man is the word of God made flesh. So those of them who are evil, needs to be afraid of Jesus, because he is able to destroy by the sword, which is the word of his Father. So, Jesus the man, is the good for the Father to us who believes, and Jesus the man, is the destroyer for the Father to them who don't believe. Continuing. For he is the minister of God, 
a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. In all of these instances, he has reference to the man Jesus. Jesus is the wrath of God expressed. The person of Jesus is the executioner of the wrath of God. In other words, the wrath of God is a person, the person of Jesus, and not a thing such as an event. Let's look at one other scripture that speaks of the wrath of God being a person, and not an event. Scripture says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. In this instance, the word wrath is a person, not an event. This is saying, Do not avenge yourselves, but give way to the person who is wrath, and that being the Lord Jesus, because only he can give vengeance that is totally righteous. Now, let's look at the timeline for the tribulation period to end. This is the timeline for the ending of the tribulation period. Notice the end is at the finishing of the fifth seal. The fifth seal most probably starts at the midpoint of the tribulation, where the saints are being overcome and killed by the Antichrist, for three and a half years. This is referenced in Revelation chapter 13. When the fifth seal is opened, we see the souls under the altar, which are the tribulation saints killed at the hand of the man of sin. They are questioning God, as to when their deaths, will be avenged by the wrath of God, so that they can receive their glorified bodies, and stand again upon the earth, showing their victory over death. And God tells them to wait a while longer, until the others that will be killed like themselves has come in, and then the resurrection will happen. Now comes the big reveal. Scripture says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. If the closing of the fifth seal is the end of the tribulation period, then according to Matthew 24, verse 29, we should see a sign in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, immediately after the close of that period. So, does this happen? If it happens, it has to happen at the opening of the sixth seal. Scripture says, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. All right, so the opening of the sixth seal, gave rise to signs in the sun, moon, and stars, immediately after the tribulation, just as Jesus said in the book of Matthew. This is very significant, to what is about to be revealed. Look at this graph again. The opening of the first seal, starts the tribulation period, while the closing of the fifth seal, ends the tribulation period. The word, wrath appears thirteen times in the book of Revelation, and none of them are found during the first five seals of the tribulation period. The first time the wrath of God is mentioned in the book of Revelation, is at the opening of the sixth seal. After the opening of the sixth seal, both of the meanings of the word, wrath, we discussed comes into play, but the tribulation period is free from the wrath of God. Therefore, if we are not appointed to wrath, and there is no wrath from God during the tribulation period, then that presupposes that the church will go through the tribulation. We are not appointed to the wrath of God. But we also are not removed from the wrath of man, the wrath of Satan, the wrath of the agents of Satan, or the wrath of the agents of God. We are only appointed to be saved from, the person who is wrath, who is the minister, and executioner of God's wrath, and that is Jesus, at his second coming, at which time the earth will be burned with fire. Jesus is the wrath of God personified. This is meaning 3709. So the person of Jesus is both the Savior, and the wrath of God. We are not appointed to wrath, that is to say, we are not appointed to the power of the indignation of Jesus, 
because we are kept saved by the power of his love. Therefore we are not appointed to the wrath of Jesus being executed by the power of himself. Which is the meaning of 3709. Here again is the word, wrath, mentioned saying. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened, and the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials, full of the wrath of God, who liveth for ever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple, till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. The meaning of wrath here is 2372. It means the anger of God being administered by angels, or agents other than himself. This wrath we are not saved from. The only wrath we are saved from is, the punishment of God administered by his own hands. Again, Jesus is the wrath of God personified, and when he himself begins to execute his anger, we will not be subject to it. In the beginning of this video, I mentioned the statement of Jesus saying, Behold I come quickly. It is at the point where, the time is after the tribulation, and after the signs in the sun, moon, and stars are present, that we are to look up for his coming, and it is at this time, from the opening of the sixth seal, that he will return quickly. This presentation solves a lot of the unknowns for me, and I have confidence that the resurrection rapture takes place after the tribulation period, being that there is no wrath of God during the tribulation. In this scenario, the church will go through the tribulation, but God has not broken his word, that we are not appointed to wrath, since there is no wrath being executed by God himself, during the tribulation period. The wrath of God is the person of Jesus, and when he returns on the day of the Lord, to execute his vengeance on the unrighteous, we will not be appointed to it. If you are not a believer, and wish to become one, tell God. I know I'm a sinner in need of a savior. Tell God. I believe Jesus died for my sins. Tell God. I believe he was dead and buried. And tell God. I believe he was raised on the third day. If your confession is from the heart, then you are become a child of God, and the wrath of God will never touch you. Thanks for watching. According to scripture, the opening of the first five seals are done without the wrath of God being present during the tribulation. Therefore, there is no pre-tribulation rapture because there is no wrath. If this study has helped you, please share it with your family and friends, and subscribe and give it a thumbs up. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.